Hello, uh, today we're going to be working with point slope form. You've already learned how to write a linear equation or a linear function in slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. m is your slope and b is the value of your y intercept. Um, and so we know how to look at the equation and determine what the slope is and what the y intercept is by just looking at that form. So today we're going to be talking about a point slope form and a point slope form involves just that. It involves a slope and it gives you one coordinate or one point on that line. And so that would be your x1, y1. Okay. And so our basic formula for the uh, point slope formula is your y minus y1, which we get from this ordered pair, equals your slope times x minus x1, which we get from the point. You'll notice that this y does not have a value or a subscript, and this x does not have a subscript. And so when we are taking a look at them, we know that this is coming from the ordered pair, and this is also coming from the ordered pair. So if I were just to look at a point slope form equation, I can pick out the slope, which would be here, and I could pick out the two ordered pairs, which is four, and in this case it is positive four. I know in the past, whenever we've had a minus sign in front of a very, uh, sorry, a constant, we have taken it with it, but in this case, because it's y minus y to subscript one, the four is gonna be positive. And then because this would be x subscript two, two or sorry, one, this is just going to be six. So six, four is your ordered pair that is on that line. Okay, and we're going to practice working with those. So when we write an equation in a point slope form for each line, we want to remember that it formula. So we got y minus my y subscript one, and that's gonna be equal to my slope times x minus my x subscript one, okay? So I have my slope is 3.5, and then my ordered pair is negative three and two. So this would be my x subscript one and my y subscript one, and this is gonna be my slope. So when I write this, I'm gonna take my y minus my y1, which is two, equals my slope, which is 3.5, times my x minus my uh, x subscript one, which is negative three. And I see this neg subtraction with a negative. And when I see that, I know that I can change it to add the opposite. So that means that if I write this in point slope form, I get y minus two equals 3.5 times x plus three it's positive three because it was minus a negative three, okay? When I take a look at this one where my slope is zero and my ordered pair is negative two, negative one, to write, write it in point slope form, I take my y minus my y one, which is negative one, equals my slope, which we know is zero, times x minus my x1, which is negative two. Uh, keep change, change. When I have subtraction with a negative, and I get y plus one equals zero times x plus two. And because I know zero times anything, I can take my y equals, oh, sorry, y plus one equals zero. So, uh, be, and this is only because I can do this. Zero times x is zero, zero times two is zero, so zero plus zero is zero, um, and that's why when we simplify it, it looks like this. Most cases, you'll see it like this, okay? So, your turn. We have a slope that is six, and one, two is on the line. And I want you to write it in the equation, uh, write the equation in the slope 
point slope form. So my slope is six and my ordered pair is one, two. If you wrote it, y minus two equals six times x minus one, you are correct. I didn't have to simplify anything. Um, my subtractions didn't have to change to add the opposite. And so that is all the further I need to go with this, is this right here. Look at number two. My slope is negative one half, and my ordered pair is negative four and two. So what I want you to do is take a moment and write it in the point slope form, please. When you got done, you should have had y minus two equals negative one half times x plus four in parentheses. Now we're going to take and write the equation in slope intercept form from the point slope form. Okay, um, we can do that in a couple of ways. One is we could pick out my slope and I could pick out my ordered pair and then use that to find my y-intercept. That's one way. That's a long way. Um, there's another way and most of it is just simplifying what we have in our point slope form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute my five and then I'm going to put it where it's y equals mx plus b, so I want y by itself and on alone on the left. So I'm going to add seven to both sides. And so the seven is gone, y equals five x plus 17. And now it is in my slope intercept form. Okay. Now I want you to try it with this one. The result ends up being y equals one half x minus seven. You'll see that you have your y alone on the left. You have your slope in front of your x and then you have your y intercept. Okay, this one is creating linear models using a point slope form and we're going to solve the problem using an equation in the point slope form says that Paul wants to place an ad in a newspaper. The newspaper charges $10 for the first two lines of text and $3 for each additional line of text. Paul's ad is eight lines long. How much will the ad cost? So we're going to let X represent the number of lines of text. And then we're going to have Y represent the cost in dollars of the ad. Because two lines of text cost $10, the point 210 is on the line because two is our number of lines and X is our cost. So we have 210 is on the line. The rate of change in the cost is $3 per line. So that means our rate of change or our slope is three. Now we can use that information and we can write it in a point slope form. Because we know our slope is three, We can take now and uh, plug in our y1 and our x1 and we get this equation. And now they want to know, it says if the ad is eight lines long, how much will the ad cost? And one of the things that we know is that the number of lines is our x value. So we're just going to replace x with eight and then we're going to simplify it. So if I have y minus 10 equals three times eight minus two, because that's my number of lines, eight minus two is six, six times three is 18. And now to get y by itself, I'm gonna add 10 to both sides. And then y is gonna cost me, so the cost for eight lines is gonna be $28. Okay. So let's try this one. Daisy purchases a gym membership. 
She pays a sign-up fee and a monthly fee of $11. After eight, or oh, sorry, after four months, she has paid a total of uh, $59. Use a linear equation in point slope form to find the sign-up fee. Well, I know that if I use X for the number of months, so X is my number of months, And Y is going to be my cost, okay? So four months, $59. So there's my ordered pair. So four months is $59. So there's my ordered pair. And then she pays a sign-up fee and then a monthly fee of $11, which means she's paying $11 every month. And so my slope or my rate of change is 11 So now that we found our slope and we found our ordered pair, write it in the slope, uh, point slope form, please. Okay, so the point slope form is y minus 59 equals 11x minus 4. Now, if I were to ask you how much it was going to cost for 10 months, um, what would you do? If you said replacing the X with 10 and solving for Y, then you are correct. So I'm going to take my Y minus 59 equals 11 minus, or sorry, 11 times 10 minus 4. And I'm going to solve for Y. Once you've simplified that, then you should have gotten 125. So that means in 10 months, it's going to cost them $125. Okay. Write an equation in point slope form for a line that goes through 2, 4, and 3, 1. Now up to this point, we have had one ordered pair and we've had slope, but this one only gives us two ordered pairs. So what is it that I need to look for first? If you said slope, you are correct. We need to find our slope first. And remember that our slope is our change in Y over my, our change in X. So I'm gonna take and find my slope, and then I'm gonna pick one of the ordered pairs and I'm gonna write it in slope point, uh, point slope form. So go ahead and do that. So I found my slope and my slope was negative three and then it said to use one of the ordered pairs and it does not matter which ordered pair you use. Now you'll notice that um, I have two different point slope equations and that is because I used two different points that were found on the same line and regardless of which one it is, it's going to work. Um, if I say that X is five, so if I say use X is five and solve to find what Y is. So in my first one, Y minus four equals negative three X minus two. If I replace my X with my uh, five, what is Y? So I plugged in five, that's five minus two is three, three times negative three is negative nine. Then I added four to both sides, and when I add four to negative nine, I get negative five. Now, what if I plug five into the other equation? So I'm gonna take y minus one equals negative three times five minus three, and solve that to find y. Now you'll notice that if I take five minus three, I get two, Two times negative three, I get negative six. So I write y minus one equals negative six. And then to simplify for y, I move my one by adding one to both sides, y equals negative five. And you'll notice, see how they both equal negative five. As long as you're substituting the same value in for x, either equation uh, will prove out. So look at number three, it says a gas station has a customer loyalty program. The graph shows an amount of Y dollars that two members paid for X number of uh, gallons of gas. 
use an equation to find the amount a member would pay for 22 gallons of gas. So the first thing we need to do is to write, um, to write it in point slope form. And to do so, I need to know the slope and one of those points. It doesn't matter which point I use, it'll still work out. And then once I have done that, then we'll substitute 22 for X and we will uh, find out how much it's going to cost them for 22 gallons of gas. So first thing I want you to do is to find the slope. And our two ordered pairs are 510 and 1849. Once I have taken and found the value of the change in Y or the change in X, I get 39 over 13, and I happen to know that 13 goes into 39 three times, so my slope is 3. It is a positive 3, and I can guarantee that it's positive because it is increasing as it moves left to right. Now that I have found my slope, I can take either one of these ordered pairs, and I can write my uh, point-slope equation. So go ahead and write your point slope equation, please. When looking at the choices, if you're if more than one is uh, correct, please choose it. So the two examples for the point slope equation would be y minus 49 equals 3 times x minus 18 using the ordered pair of 1849. And then if I use the ordered pair of 510, I get y y minus 10 equals 3 times x minus 5. Now, choosing either one, if I know that they're going to buy 22 gallons of gas, I'm going to substitute that in for my x, and I'm going to find out how much it costs for 22 gallons. So I chose the y minus 10 equals 3 times x minus 5, and the reason I chose it is they are smaller numbers, um, therefore, I think they're easier to work with, um, but I could have e easily have used the other equation. So I substituted 22 in for x. 22 minus 5 is 17. 17 times 3 is 51. So I have y minus 10 equals 51. I'm going to add 10 to both sides, and that means that y equals 61. So that is telling me that for 22 gallons of gas, it's going to cost them $61. Okay, here's the last example. I'd like for you to work it on your own. Um, when you finish, I will place, post the answers, and you can check your answers with mine and your work. And if you have any questions, please make sure you see your teacher. So at this point, you should have found that the slope is 6, and you should have a point-slope equation that is either y equals 107 equals 6 times x minus 10, or y minus 137 equals 6 times x minus 15. I got my numbers for my x's and y's from my my sentence that was 10 skaters cost $107 or 15 skaters cost 137. So I made my number of skaters to be my x's and my cost for those skaters to be my y. Now solve to find out how much it's going to cost for 12 skaters. So I picked one of my equations I plugged in 12 for my um, for my x value. 12 minus 10 is 2. 2 times 6 is 12. Then I added 107 to both sides of the equation. I get 119. So we found that the equation will solve that 12 skaters will cost $119. Remember, if you have any questions, see your teacher.